Blue Lock spin-off manga Iseki Yoichi explores how his true ego got sealed at a young age. The novel narrates a tale of how a kid went from the unstoppable striker Iseki Yoichi to a generic high school football player before he was called out to Blue Lock. And recently with Kaiser and Rin fiending for Iseki's blood and the NEL being at its final moments, our adaptability demon will have to bring his A-game in order to defy the odds. And I truly believe his original ego will be fully unchained in this game as he rises to the top. So let's explore this tale. I'm going to start today's video with a spoiler alert. If you haven't read the spin-off novel, I highly recommend doing so before watching this video, as I will be going over several elements of it. But with that out of the way, let's start with how Isegi's ego got sealed in the first place. Isegi Oichi, or how his parents love to call him, Yokocha. Grew up like your typical kid, not that excellent in school but got by just fine, a bit timid but with some friends. However, one thing set him apart. Yokcha had an insane spatial awareness, he was able to detect mosquitoes and flies across the room, so he never got stung. And even more impressively, he can anticipate if there will be a storm by the small changes in the weather, and so he never got stuck under the rain, which is both very cute and really OP for a kid as this spatial awareness made Isiki into a crybaby. Due to all of the information his little eyes and senses capture, his brain usually gets overwhelmed. However, in one faithful day, his family got invited to a soccer game by a friend of theirs. And given that his parents weren't really interested in football, it was a surprise to see their little scaredy boy show so much passion for it. In a shocking fashion, he wasn't frightened by the chaotic nature of the crowd. In total contrast to what they expected, he actually was engulfed by it and was captivated by everything from the intensity of the game to the heat of the crowd. And here, Yokocha found his new reason to live. And that's the story of how at a young age he started playing football like crazy. A scaredy little boy who shined on the field. It was like seeing a totally different person. A little kid who was crazy about football and with the talent to back it off, as it was apparent to everyone watching their little league how dominant he was compared to the other kids. At this stage in his life, Isegi's love for the sport was very apparent, but he still didn't have any ego or dream to follow. All he did was play to his heart's content. But all of this changed in one night. The night Yoko-chan's baby eyes laid sight on Noel Noah for the first time. Isigi was watching football on TV as usual, but this time he witnessed something different. His eyes laid sight on the man who will be known as the greatest striker in the world. The way he slices through the defense with no wasted motion, and then to score an amazing goal without making any emotion. But what captivated Isigi more than his skills was Noah's attitude towards the sport. After the game and in a long interview, at a certain point Noah stated, instead of assisting my teammate to win by a 1-0 score, it feels better to pull off a hat-trick and lose 3-4. This captivated Yokocha so much and marks the birth of the egoist Isegi Yoichi, as his admiration for Noah's philosophy made him into a scoring machine. In his middle school days, and with Noah always on his mind, Isegi set sights on going pro, be a regular in Japan's national team, and then score a goal at the World Cup Finals, giving Japan its first World Cup win. This was his dream, a big dream indeed, but with it came a very big ego. Isegi stopped at nothing to reach that dream, using his high spatial awareness and skill to fully dominate the front line, until he was rightfully dubbed the unstoppable striker Isegi Yoichi. And while it seemed to be going very well for the young egoist, one thing is true about life, is that it will always test how far you are willing to fight for your dreams. As for Isegi, soon he will face the biggest wall in his career, that is the Japanese high school football. In this new high school team, it wasn't the environment that was an issue, as his teammates were amazing, as well as his coach. And even the competition was high enough to produce good players and help Isigi to become the striker that he always dreamt of becoming. Rather, it was the philosophy of the team, one for all and all for one. This motto was written at the entrance of the team's locker room and was almost worshipped. And while the coach and other players really believed in this, after all, football is a team game played by 11 players, Isigi on the other hand believed firmly that this was wrong. Even though it's a team's game, he truly believed that the individual skills are what makes the team. The first time he saw the school's motto, Isegi asked his friend Tada 
if he sees anything wrong with this statement, with the latter replying that it is the best way to play football, all as one unit. This did not resonate well with Isigi, as it contradicted what Noah said completely. However, every time he brought out this bad feeling he has to his coach and teammates, they laugh and shrug it off. Bit by bit, Isigi conformed to the norms of the team, losing his individuality and becoming just another high school player. He forgot about his dream and his ego that once made him unstoppable got sealed deep down Isigi's mind. Shackled by the chains of his high school team philosophy, or rather by the nature of Japanese football. Here we reach the beginning of Blue Lock. But before we carry on however, I am happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Anime Express. If you are looking for the best quality shirts, hoodies, jewelry and LEDs featuring your favorite anime and manga, like Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer, head to AnimeExpress.store and use code ACE10 for a 10% discount on your purchases. The link is in the description, thank you. And now back to our tale. With the national qualifiers, it is Isigi's high school versus Kira's. Isigi is in possession of the ball in the final moments of the game. If he scores, he will tie the game and they will have a fighting chance for the nationals in the additional time. We can clearly see how Isigi's ego is making him super focused on scoring, but again his teammates and coach crush that ego with one for all and all for one mental. Isigi confirms and passes and well, the rest is history. It all seems as if the unstoppable striker Isegi Oichi will just be buried as another regular player if it wasn't for the genius of Igor Jinpachi, who was watching the game and against Anri's wishes, he summoned Isegi. Now, this loss and frustration that Isegi felt were the perfect catalyst for Igor's speech to resonate that well with him. Hell, it affected him so good that he ran to Blue Lock before big egoists like Rin and Baro. This serves as a clear indication that when it comes to ego, Isigi has the biggest in Blue Lock, even if it is still buried. However, this wasn't enough. In the second selection, this Isigi faced the guy in Blue Lock, aka him, aka Rin Itoshi. And well, he got completely destroyed. This defeat was so bad, a new Isigi with an ego on a whole different level was born. Enter the adaptability demon. This new version that was born from being pushed and the threat of being eliminated was a menace to say the least. A demon that adapts, improves and eventually defeats everyone. The Mahoraga of Blue Lock. First it was Naruhaya, then Baro, the concept of luck from Ego, the assassin Karasso, Rin and Shido, Sion Berserker Rin, Metavision from Kaiser, Yuki Miya and Kaiser again. Hell, even the player rated second best in the world, Chris Prince, was taken by surprise and got devoured on two different occasions by Isegi. Yet, as much as the adaptability demon was oppressive, he found his match in the Italy game. After Bastard's second goal, Ubers completely adapted to Kaiser and Isegi's metavision. As we saw in chapter 233, Baro was out of their field of vision completely, and Lorenzo was able to lure them very easily. Had it not for the surprise of Hiyori having metavision too, and his dribbling ability, Ubers would have crushed Bastard completely. This posed an insane challenge for Isegi, who was reaching the limits of his current ego. For the first time, the adaptability demon can't adapt fast enough. The biggest problem for Isegi was that both Baro and Kaiser developed a sense of adaptability of their own, and also an egocentrism against Isegi. They were able to hold all of his and Hiyori's plays, and the new awakening was due. And what do you know, the writer had a treat for us when he showed what that might look like in this panel. Do it reflexively, said Isegi, while this shadowy aura was leaking from him. This immediately took me back to Rin's Berserker form, the same shadowy aura, and almost the same look. And when you think about it, it makes so much sense. Rin said that his Berserker form was something very familiar, with a picture of Kid Rin shown, to indicate that this is what was on his mind. Furthermore, Sai commented on how he can still make that face, which could mean that Rin's Berserker form is Rin's true ego on display, after being dormant for all of these years. And this is our ticket to understanding Isigi's true ego. So let's discuss what we know from Rin, and see what applies and what that ego might look like for Yoichi. First, I want to address what we know won't apply to Isigi. Rain completely throwing away everything doesn't really fit with the way Isigi is evolving and it is far-fetched. As it stands, Isigi seems to be following a similar evolution path to that of Baro's and is becoming Bastard's Light, with Yuki, Kuruna, Raichi and recently Hiyori following him. 
As such, I think his full ego will get him to be more similar to Snuffy, as he will become the eye of the storm for the team he plays for, creating scoring opportunities, shining as a striker and getting the best out of his teammates. Second thing would be how dominant ruins Berserker form in 1v1 duels. I think this part also would be unique to Rin, since we never really saw Isigi win a 1v1 duel with the ball against top players. Even though the novel states as a kid Isigi was able to beat 5 players and score a goal all on his own. However, facing local kids is obviously different from beating top players. And the winning goal against Ubers is a clear cut indication, as he completely threw away dribbling and left it for Yuki and Hiyori. Yet, there is much we can learn from Rin's destructive dribbling other than just the 1v1 duels, particularly why it's called the destructive dribbling. This label reminds me of our first showing of Rin where he said that football is a battleground. Do you guys notice something? There is a contrast here. At the beginning, Rin's aura seemed to be water, to indicate how calm and powerful he is. But when his ego awakened, it was similar to the destruction he spoke of. It's almost as if his deepest thoughts manifested which is actually very interesting and is an important detail. This could mean that we have already witnessed what Isiki's true ego would be like, but we may not have given it enough attention. In fact, I think I might have pinpointed what Isiki's true ego will be all about. And the more I reread the recent chapters and took a good look into Isiki's development, the more it made sense to me. What I am talking about is this hunger Isiki showed after beating Kira, but more importantly Nico. What made me get suspicious about it is actually the sadistic smile from Ego, when Isigi was engulfed in the joy of winning with his own goal. In the novel we have seen how Ego Jinpachi was able to see something in Isigi beyond what meets the eye. Hell, even Anri was opposed to this decision of calling him to Blue Lock, as she saw nothing of value in Isigi. Yet, that sadistic smile could indicate that what Ego saw in Isigi was correct, and it might just unintentionally manifest it. This made me believe that Isigi's true ego's manifestation might be in the form of a goal-hungry demon that creates infinite opportunities for goals with strategies beyond what others can anticipate. But also that demon will manipulate and control everyone to a greater sense than ever before. And the seed has already been planted of how that might look with Snuffy's playing style. And finally, Isigi will be a scoring machine that turns zeros into ones very effectively. And at this point, I know you might be wondering, isn't this the same as the Isigi we know, albeit more efficient? Much like Metavision was the next big bang step to Isigi's off the ball movements, this new ego will be the evolved version of Isigi's current playing style, a more focused, a more goal hungry, and an even more dangerous menace, worthy of reigning as the king of Blue Lock. Thinking back to the times where Isigi unintentionally awakened his Metavision, it was all under tough situations where Isigi was pushed to his limits. But also we have seen how Rin awakened when his whole playing style got devoured by Sai and the blue lockers, especially Isigi. And thus it made sense for me to see a glimpse of the same thing happening to Isigi in the Ubers game, where his back was pushed against the wall, a shadowy aura leaked from him. Isigi evolved and perfected a plan where he created a goal path that took everyone by surprise as Isigi slipped right under their noses. I believe this wasn't a complete evolution, and once an even harsher conditions are met and Isigi is pushed far enough, his true ego will burst open and everyone will be up for the chopping block. So the remaining question now is, what would that final push be and who are the players that will push Isigi into his unchained state? Well, with only one game left, I believe it's going to be 4 players mainly, and a 5th dark horse player that will be the nail in the coffin. So in chapter 246, we saw how Loki, in the same fashion as Noah, is going to have two systems in play for both Rin and Shido versus the Kaiser and Isigi double-headed dragon. And here we have an all-out war, with Kaiser fiending for blood, and with no Don Lorenzo on his ass, he will push Isigi harder than we ever saw in the Ubers game especially with his new weapon that he found. On the flip side, we saw throughout the series how Ren and Isigi basically have the same vision and reading ability of the field, with Baro being the only blue locker who was able to keep up with them. This got confirmed in the Ubers game. Baro was the biggest roadblock for Isigi. However, with Ren, it will be even worse. He will be more problematic to Isigi than Baro, especially due to his meta vision and berserker state. 
I believe Rin will be the blueprint for Isiki on how to awaken, after being the hardest hurdle in his path. But the misery doesn't end here. With Aryo's lockdown being lifted up, we will finally get the full force fallen hero Konigami that we saw in the Manshine City game. And with his rivalry with Shido being at full swing, we can expect both players to be waging their own war, stealing the spotlight from Isiki and further pushing him toward his breaking point. And thus, these four players, but especially Rin, will give Isiki no rest and keep pushing him to his absolute limit. And here, the fifth and the Dark Horse player comes into the picture. Karasu the Assassin. The seeds have already been planted in the third selection, and with us witnessing how he locked Otoya in the FC Barsha game, I believe we might see Karasu pulls off another lockdown on Isegi, and he might even learn from Lorenzo, which would limit Isegi's freedom greatly, while the other four players keep pushing him, until... Enter the full-on egoist Isegi Oichi, who will dominate the final moments of the game, pull off an insane play, and score the winning for Bastard to reign on top of everyone as the new number one player in Blue Lock and the new king of the NEL, signaling that Japan is ready for the World Cups. With this, we reach the ending of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and don't forget to check Anime Express and use code ACE10 for amazing manga and anime merch. Until next time, thank you for watching.